Matt Frazier, The Psychic Medium, and I am live right now, so come on and enjoy me. I want to talk to you guys about what happens when souls cross over. By now, I'm sure that you've either seen in movies, heard on TV shows, or even read a book where we talk about souls crossing over, and maybe you've heard about something called the white light, right? Have you ever heard about a soul going through a tunnel of white light? Maybe you've heard of somebody who had a near-death experience, and they explained that there was just this tunnel of white light that just opened up. Well, I'm here today to talk to you guys all about it, and I'm going to tell you that this is one of the most interesting things that happens when a soul first leaves their body, because that tunnel of white light that they see isn't just a doorway to the other side. It's actually how your soul leaves your body. So I want to share with you all about it. It's not anything to be spooky or to be afraid about or to be nervous about, especially once you understand what's really happening. So I want to share with you what the other side has shared with me. And I also want to say hello to all of you. I see Donna Williams is here from Kentucky. I also see that Karen is here as well. And Diane is here. And I see that Bianca is here from New Jersey. And I'm also seeing Ashley is here as well. And Angie says, I'm really excited about this. I got to tell you, I'm really excited to share this with all of you. And I also see that uh, Lisa Ann is here because I love it when, it when you, when, when I catch you at the start of a live, me too. I try to plan it that way, you guys. I try to plan it at a time when hopefully you guys are relaxing in bed, right? <laughs> and just chilling. And all of a sudden you get the Matt Frazier notification that says that I'm live. We're going to talk about the afterlife, right? It's, it's a time to unwind. It's a time to think about how you're connected with the other side. And also, it's really cool to talk about these things because we get a sense of what our loved ones before us had to go through when they left this world. So while we wait for a few more people to join, please share this live, get it on your page because sometimes Facebook and YouTube doesn't always uh, spread it around. So please make sure that you share it. And also while I have you all here right now, before we get started talking about the white light and crossing over, I want you guys to know that I just announced some brand new tour dates. So starting September 29th, you guys, I am back on tour and I'm letting you guys know that I am coming. My first tour stop back on tour is to Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. I'll be giving live readings at Casino New Brunswick. There's only a few seats left. Then I'm coming to Harris, Michigan for two nights. I'll be giving live readings at the Island Resort Casino on October 6th and October 7th in Harris, Michigan. Then I'm coming to Omaha, Nebraska for the very first time. I'm so freaking excited about that. I'm coming to the Peter Kuwait Concert Hall. Then I'm also coming to Kansas City, Missouri, where I'll be giving live readings at, uh, excuse me, at Uptown Theater on October 15th. I'm also coming to Laughlin, Nevada, where I'll be giving live readings at the Edgewater Resort Casino. And then I'm also coming to Santa Rosa, California, where I'll be giving live readings at the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts. I'm also coming to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where I'll be giving live readings at the Wind Creek Event Center that's happening December 7th. And then the very last tour stop of the year, December 9th. I will be giving live readings up close and personal at Foxwoods Resort Casino. So if you'd like to join me, just visit my website for tickets, meetmattfraser.com. And then in February, the whole tour starts over all over again. And I will be giving live readings in Wheatland, California at the Hard Rock Sacramento. So I tried to spread myself all around. If you can come and see me live in person, you can get tickets on my website, meetmattfraser.com. What I also want you guys to know is that I just added some new online readings as well. So what I want you to know is that September is completely sold out for online readings, but there's a few spots left in October. So if you would like to join me for a live online reading, you got to go to my website, meetmattfraser.com. That's where you can find tour dates, online readings, and on October 30th, the night before Halloween, my mom and I are coming together and we're doing an online psychic seance where we're going to be helping you connect with your own psychic ability. We're going to share with you safe ways to connect with your loved ones on the other side. We're going to answer your questions. And together, me and my mom are going to put our abilities together for the very first time and do live readings online. So if you'd like to be a part of that event, it's all on meetmattfraser.com. If the dead can find me, so can you. All right. Now that that's over, let's talk about what happens when we pass on. So first of all, what's so amazing is that when a loved one passes on to the other side, when your loved one is really close to passing, and I mean seconds away from passing, there's something amazing that happens. It's called the tunnel of white light. So what happens is this, is that when your soul begins to lift out of your body, right? We leave our physical body behind, our soul lifts out, and when your soul lifts out, something opens up. There's this doorway to heaven, or we call it a doorway to heaven. It looks like a portal. It's this big, 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 giant tunnel of white light. And like I said, a lot of people have had this experience if 
you have gone and uh, had a near-death experience, if you know someone who had a near-death experience, or maybe you've heard other people talk about this like psychics and mediums. What I want you to know is that the tunnel of white light appears when we start to leave our body. And this is a really, really important thing. The tunnel of white light is what allows us to become a spirit. It's a big transformation. I like to think of it as this. If you guys had seen The Little Mermaid, all right, when Ariel gets her wings, I assume, excuse me, gets her legs. What do I say in wings? When Ar I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about angels. When, if you've ever watched The Little Mermaid where Ariel gets her legs, right? And all of a sudden she goes from being a mermaid. And then all of a sudden there was, there's this energy that cycles around her and she just gets legs out of nowhere. That's what I like to think about what happens when a soul goes through the tunnel of white light. So what happens is, is when we die, we separate from our body. Our soul lifts, lifts out. So our body goes this way, our soul goes this way, and your soul enters into this, this tunnel of white light. So what is the white light, first of all? Well, the white light that you actually see in that tunnel is the purest form of energy. White light is the purest form of energy that they can possibly be. It's a healing energy, it's a cleansing energy, and it's an energy so strong that it clears out anything that's negative and or evil, right? So what happens is, is that when that tunnel of white light opens, it's actually you going from your physical body, taking form into your spirit body, right? It's what helps you to transition into the spirit. And then what also happens is, is that in that tunnel of white light, it's a cleanse that we go through. We enter into our life review and we also leave behind the things that were human. That tunnel of white light isn't just a hallway that we're walking down that's super bright. There's actually a process that happens. And Shirley's saying to me, Matt, is it scary? Actually, no, it's not scary. You know, the souls that I've talked to on the other side, hold on, let me turn my phone off right now. So the souls that I've talked to on the other side have told me that when they enter into this tunnel of white light, suddenly they don't feel sick anymore. They could have had the worst disease, the worst illness. They may not have been able to walk, may not have been able to talk, wait, may not have been able to remember. But, but the moment that their soul enters into this tunnel of white light, suddenly they can see, hear, think, feel. All of a sudden they can feel what it's like to be healthy again. They don't have any negativity that they're holding on to. They don't have any pain and they just feel so, so good. So that tunnel of white light is because they're around the purest form of white light, the white light energy. It's a form of love. And that's what the other side is, is that it's an energy of love, right? So it's actually funny. When I do readings, right, and I see your loved ones in spirit, every time your loved ones come through, I always see a white light behind them. And the reason why is because your loved ones are on a higher vibration. That white light is the white light of heaven. If you've ever heard of people talk about good spirits and bad spirits, and thank you for asking that question, Shirley. If you ever heard of people talking about good spirits and bad spirits, what do they say? Bad spirits are always dark, shadowy figures, right? Shadows that are that are dark and cold and that creep that that creep in the uh, corners in the night, right? Where if anyone has had the experience of seeing their loved one in spirit, it'll always be that their loved one appears with this beautiful white light behind them. Why? Because their loved one is in spirit, and more importantly, their loved one is in heaven. Right. And this is a really good question. Sarah says, well, if they lose their illness, right, when you transition onto the other side and you go through the tunnel of white light, what about their personality? So you hold on when you enter into that tunnel of white light, you hold on to the good qualities of you. Right. And the qualities of you that can't be that, excuse me, the qualities of you that can't be destroyed. For example, your personality, your memories, all of those things are stored deep within you. Your personality is who you are. Your personality, your appearance, the memories that you made, the connections that you had here in this world, you don't lose any of those things. But you do lose the things that were that were negative here in this world, right? For example, illness, pain, suffering, right? Also things connected with illness like memory loss. So what's cool is, is that your soul is the perfect version of you. Whether you lost a finger or a toe or you lose your hair, your soul remains intact. And what's truly amazing is that when you transition on, when your soul leaves this world and transitions onto the other side, something else happens. What happens is, is when, you're, when you leave this world, it's amazing because all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, you feel the best version of yourself. Because many times there's things here in this world that hold us back. 
we may get wrapped up with addictions here in this world. We might get wrapped up with um, we may get wrapped up with alcoholism here in this world. We may have suffered for years and years and years with a mental illness and it caused us to lose a piece of ourself. Well, what I can tell you is that when souls go through that tunnel of white light, immediately they're able to see what they're like, right? They're able to see the true version of themselves, the true version that they'd hoped to be when they looked into the mirror. And it's an eye-opening experience. It's a beautiful experience. And it's experience where your loved ones at that moment, as they move through this tunnel of white light, they go through different, different phases of it, right? First, it's leaving their physical body coming into their, into their uh, spirit body. Then it is that as that's happening, you know, the pain, the illness, all those negative things are being left behind. At that moment, their loved ones are appearing. They're seeing pets and loved ones. They're meeting their guardian angel, their spirit guide. And then they go through their life review. And then all of a sudden, if you ever heard of somebody who was dying, right? For example, how many, how many people have been close to dying? And they'll tell you the story where all of a sudden their life flashed before their eyes. Well, if you've ever heard of someone saying that their life flashed before their eyes, they're actually talking that they get a little glimpse into their life review. When we pass away and we start to enter into that, into that tunnel of white light, we don't see it at the very beginning. But all of a sudden, our life starts to replay. That's what the spirits tell us, is that when we're dying, we go through a journey like we've never had here in this world. Our life starts to replay from the moment that we're born to the moment that we meet our parents or the moment that our parents hold us to the moment that we take our first steps to the moment that we graduate high school or we meet our soulmate to when we walk down the aisle till you go and you have your first child, right? And all the challenges in between, all the things that happen in between. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the day of your own death. That's what's truly amazing. And then... What I have to tell you is this, and this is a really good question. Wendy says, Matt, do you, I think she meant, meant to say, do you meet God and or Jesus in heaven? Absolutely, you do. The souls have come to me all the time and told me that that was the most amazing thing. Not only do they meet God and, and uh, Jesus, but I'll tell you that they also have told me that they meet angels, guardian angels, right? All different people on the other side. People that they would have never, never, never been able to know that were watching over them here in this world. So the tunnel of white light is amazing because it's something that uh, allows us to leave this world and transition into the next world. It's what prepares our soul for that big journey. And that's what allows us to become a spirit. Without that white light, there's no other way that we can actually become a spirit. And that's why some souls, some souls will get to the end of their life review, right? And be like, oh my God, that was amazing. They'll be so excited. They'll see their loved ones and they'll transition to the other side. And there will still be some souls that even the white light can't change. And those are the evil spirits. So, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, souls will go through that life of you and be like, oh my God, and have an amazing experience and get to heaven and meet their friends and their loved ones and their pets. But then there's those evil spirits, the, the you know, 0.01%, I like to call them, that won't transition on because they're truly evil to their core. And even that white light can't save them. And those are the people who are doing terrible, terrible things like murder, right? They were serial killers, things of that nature. So what I can tell you is this. What I can tell you to keep it light is that that's the reason why psychics and mediums will always say work in the light. Have you ever heard of that? All mediums and, and psychic mediums, they'll call, they'll call each other light workers. They'll talk about working in the light. They'll talk about calling upon the light, right? Well, what they're actually doing is they're talking about only talking to the souls that are transitioned on, only talking to the souls that are in that higher vibration. And a lot of times when psychics and mediums meditate, a lot of psychic meditations incorporate something called the white light because the white light is actually the white light of heaven. It's that higher vibration. So I remember when I was a little kid, right? And I first started seeing and hearing dead people. Every time, every time I made it, I, every, every time I, I made it uh, into my bedroom at night, right? There'd be all these souls that were lined up. And when they would come and speak to me, I always remember that they had white light behind them. It was amazing because that's really the only different at that point, that was the only differential factor that I realized that they were dead is that they always had white light, this bright, bright, bright white light almost looked like if somebody were to be behind you, right? With the, with the car, like you ever walk in front of a car and all you see is, is what, I shouldn't put it that way. Ever been in a parking lot when someone's got their car lights on or the headlights on and somebody walks in front of it and they have that big, beautiful white light around them, right? That's what it always looked to, like to me 
as a child. That's what I always saw when I saw the departed, especially when my grandmother came to visit me and certain loved ones would come to visit me because they're in the higher vibration. Yes, and that's a really good thing to say. Linda says they always go to the light. And I'll tell you, Linda, that the thing is, is this, that's why you always hear about psychics and mediums and paranormal investigators. They always tell you that if you feel an evil spirit around you, you tell them, go to the light, go to the light. Well, why is that? Well, because nothing can exist. No negativity can exist in heaven in with that white light, right? For example, one of the acts that I always do, right, is that if I'm stressed, if I have anxious thoughts, if I have worrisome thoughts, if I have, you know, really panic thoughts, I'll always send them to heaven. And I tell my clients to do this as well. And some people will say to me, Matt, why is it that, why is it that you would send your negative thoughts to heaven? You know, won't, won't, won't heaven and your loved ones be mad? Why would you do that? Well, it's because I know that negativity can't exist there. So if you send your negative thoughts to heaven, you say, you know, angels, guide, spirits, ascended masters, God, please help me. I'm really having a hard time controlling this thought, this thought, this thought. It keeps coming in, in, into my head. So I'm going to leave it with you, Right. But I can tell you is that those negative thoughts can't exist just like evil spirits don't exist in heaven. They're on a lower vibration, but our loved ones are on a higher vibration. So what I want you guys to know, oh, thank you so much, Lisa, says to me, Matt, thank you so much for sharing your gift with the world. I love doing what I do. I got to tell you, I love coming on here and talking about it and speaking about it and, and sharing with you everything that I've learned from your loved ones. So what I can tell you is, is that when you transition on to the other side or when a loved one transitions on to the other side, that portal opens, right, of white light. You leave your body, you take on your spirit body, you go through your life review, and, it, and the white light is just this cleansing, that just this cleansing energy that surrounds you at the time that you're transitioning on. And what I can tell you is this, is that once you're in the light, you stay in the light. And once you become energy, what's really cool is, is that when you take on your spirit body, you're no longer holding on to the pain, the hurt, and the negative things that maybe once consumed you here in this world. For example, let's say here in this world, you, there was stress. There, there was stress that you had over, you know, a certain health problem. Maybe it was diabetes. Maybe it was that your whole life you just had ongoing health issues. On the other side, you don't have to worry about that because you're in a spirit body and not a physical body. And like I said, I like to think of the white light that we see—that tunnel of white light almost being almost like a, just a vehicle that transports us to the other side. It's really, really cool, you guys. And what's amazing is, is that your loved ones are able to be there and be in that tunnel of white light because they passed on before you. And that's the coolest thing. And once you go through that tunnel of white light, it's and once you leave behind the pain, the illness, all of those things that are left behind here in this world, what's really cool is that you don't ever absorb that again. So that's why I tell you guys that when your loved ones come through in heaven, one, there's no longer illness there. Two, your loved ones can't die on the other side. There are no cemeteries in heaven. And three, your loved ones do not have judgments against you on the other side. They are there to help you, to watch over you, to look after you, and they're not judging you. You know, here in this world, we naturally judge. It's what we do as humans, right? We might try not to, but sometimes there's always that time when we're like, oh, why would she do this instead of that, right? Oh, why would you make that decision? Why would he go out with her, right? We always have an opinion, right? We always have an opinion as humans. But the thing is, we have these opinions because we always think about how we would do things, the choices that we would make. And when somebody makes a different choice, right, because we can't, we can't go into their brain because we can't see what they're thinking or what they're feeling at the time, we judge. But on the other side, your loved ones don't because one, your loved ones were able to look back on their life. They were able to see every decision that they made. They're able to look in on your life and they're able to understand you better because they can see why you made those decisions and those choices. Not just the reason why you not just the reason why you know you ended up with this person instead of this person, if that makes sense. And what I can tell you is, is that when your loved ones go through that tunnel of white light, they also have something else that happens. Your loved ones, it's like they become psychic. When your loved ones enter into that tunnel of white light, they're able to see things as a spirit that they couldn't see as humans, meaning that your loved ones are able to see five years into the future, 10 years into the future, 30 years into the future. They're able to know things that they couldn't have known here in this world. For example, let's say that your mom had Alzheimer's for 10 years, right? When she goes to that tunnel of white light, all of a sudden those 10 years where she had Alzheimer's suddenly is, is just brought back to her and she's able to see all the conversations that you had with her, all the things that you had done for her, all the things that she couldn't see when that illness had taken control of her body. 
Same thing happens when somebody passes of a mental illness, right? Mental illness in the spirit side is no different than a physical illness. The way that it changes us, the way that it can affect our body is something that's healed once we get to the other side. And there's been many souls that I've talked to that have gone through terrible things here in this world, like a mental illness that changed them. And the moment they go through that tunnel of white light, they're able to be the version of themselves that they were supposed to be here in this world. And they're able to see things, right? How many of you have known somebody here in this world who unfortunately may have passed of an addiction or alcoholism or something like that, right? If you lost somebody in that way, right? How many times were, when they were alive here in this world, do you feel like you tried to get them help or you tried to do something, you tried to show them their behavior. And for some reason, it was like talking to a wall that you, they, they just couldn't understand. I can tell you, I've had many readings like that. But the most amazing thing is when those souls come back, when those souls go through that tunnel of white light, they see one thing. They see the person that they wanted to be and the person they ended up being. And many times when loved ones go through that tunnel of white light and they have that flashback and they look back through their life, they also regret the things that they couldn't do or that they should have done here in this world. They wish that they would have been a, a better father or a better mother. They wish that they would have taken care of their family more. They wish that they would have gone and, may, and uh, you know, pursued more of their talent, skills, and abilities. They wish that they didn't get involved, you know, with uh, addiction or whatever it may be. Or they wish that they would have gotten, they would have gone and got help when the family had urged them. The tunnel of white light is so important because it's our final journey from a phys the physical world to the spirit world and from our physical body to our spirit form. And it's amazing transformation. It's, you know, it might sound a little scary or it might sound a little bit overwhelming, but it's actually beautiful because during that white light experience, you get to see why you were put here on earth and you're able to see just how meaningful your life was. Like, for example, sometimes people come up to me and they'll say to me, Matt, you talk about every every life has meaning, right? How come my life has meaning? I, I lived a simple life. I didn't do anything. You know, I stayed home all day. I didn't get married. I don't have kids. It's just me and my dogs. My life's simple. I didn't change the world. There's nothing I did, right? And I remember this one woman had said that to me. And it was so funny because she had said to me that she never had any kids. She lived a simple life. She lived at home with her dogs. Her family had all died. She felt like she didn't have anything that she gave to this world. But yet she was a school teacher and she taught kids, you know, um, in the third and fourth grade. And it was funny because when I tapped in, I saw so clearly her life, you know, talking to the spirit world. I was talking to her guides and her guides were showing me all the ways that she changed the world without even realizing it because she inspired something in her students, right? She didn't realize it. She just thought like, oh, you know, she was a great teacher. She loved kids. She just thought she was going to school, doing her job every day when really, because of her, she inspired something in those kids. She inspired some of those kids to be future teachers. She, insp uh, she um, inspired some of those kids, you know, to go and to have respect because some of them didn't have good home lives. She, there were so many ways that she touched those children and she changed their lives without even realizing it. Well, you guys are doing the same thing. And when you go through that tunnel of white light, one day when you pass away, hopefully not for many, many years, but one day when it happens and we go through this big movie of our life and our life flashes before us, we see all the ways, all the ways that we change this world. And you will be shocked to see, one, how you changed the world, two, how very special and important you are, and the reason why you were born here in this world. And you'll also see how every single person is co-intertwined uh, co here in this world, right? How you're connected to you're, you're connected to so many people that you would have no idea. You know, this is energy connection that just connects us all. And it's really cool because the other side shows me this like this spiritual loop where somehow, some way, we're all connected. And that's what's really cool. So I really hope to help this helped you to understand that because I wanted to talk about the tunnel of white light because that explains a lot about why your loved ones communicate in the way that they do, right? It's the reason why your loved ones send you signs. It's the reason why your loved ones appear in dreams. It's the reason why you might feel this weird presence, like a chill going down your spine. And really it's your mom coming to visit you or your dad coming to visit you. It's because your loved ones are by your side. They're able to see into our world being in spirit but we can't see theirs, but we can feel them. Your loved ones, because they're, they're spirit and because they're energy, they can, appear to you, they can appear to you using signs, 
using symbols, using energy, and there's always a way for them to appear in your life and to send you messages, even when you don't believe it or expect it. So that being said, I really hope this video helped you tonight. I loved being live here with all of you. And what I want you guys to know is that if you'd like to join me, there are two online readings left excuse me, two upcoming online readings that are available right now on my website. September, unfortunately, is all sold out for online readings. October 1st is sold out. October 3rd is sold out. October 5th is sold out. But the next online reading where you can join me and I'll be giving live video readings right from this office is happening on October 17th and October 19th. So if you'd like to join me for a live online video reading right in this office, just go to my website, meetmattfraser.com. It's $19 to register, meetmattfraser.com, because unfortunately, I can only allow a limited amount of people, and once we're sold out, we are sold out. And what I also want you guys to know is for the first time ever, if you haven't heard, on October 30th, me and my mom, who's also psychic, but she's got a very different gift than I do, me and my mom, for the first time ever, are putting our psychic abilities together. And we are hosting a Halloween psychic seance the night before Halloween on October 30th. That's the time when the veil between heaven and earth is the thinnest. And that's the opt that's the um that is the perfect opportunity for you to connect with your loved ones, learn how to connect with the other side, and tap in. So me and my mom are coming together on October 30th. You can sign up on my website, meetmattfraser.com, if you want to be a part of that psychic seance event. And right away, when I first said I was doing a psychic seance event, so many of you guys were writing to me saying, Matt, you didn't turn over to the dark side, did you? Why are you calling it a seance? That sounds so creepy. That sounds so weird. That sounds so negative. And listen, don't let the word creep you out. What the psychic seance actually is, is it's a positive uplifting event that me and my mom are doing to teach you the same ways that we connect with the spirit world, the same way that we make contact with the spirit world, and how you can unlock your psychic ability. Because what spirit has told me is that we all have a deep connection to the other side. We all have a way to tap into our psychic ability and to, to, um, to uh, receive messages from our loved ones in spirit. It's almost like this. Some people write to me and they're like, Matt, I'm so freaked out, all right? I used to be really psychic. I used to be really intuitive, but not so much anymore. I'm not psychic anymore. I'm not intuitive anymore. You never lose that connection. It's just like the landlines in your house, right? I have landlines all throughout my house, but I don't have a landline phone. But if I wanted to, I could buy a landline, plug in the phone, right? And have a connection to the, to the phone service, right? Even though that connection is there, I don't use it. And that's what I've learned with many of you is that many of you have deep psychic ability and many of you might sense and feel things. You might feel like the phone's going to ring and next thing you know, it does. So you might feel like someone's sick and you need to call them and you do when you find out they, they just got scheduled for an operation. And you might have these weird psychic moments, but not feel like you're truly psychic. It just means that you're tapping in, tapping out, tapping in, tapping out. So me and my mom are coming together on October 30th. We're going to share with you how to connect with the other side. We're all going to connect with the other side together. Me and my, my mom are also going to answer questions and do some readings. So make sure you're part of that October 30th online psychic seance. All right. Make sure that you join me for the next online reading. It's $19. Just go to meetmattfraser.com if you would like a reading from me. And one last thing. If you haven't heard, I talked about this in the beginning, the beginning of this video. If you'd like to meet me live in person, I am heading back on the road on September 29th. I am going back on tour and I'm heading to Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. I'll be giving readings at the casino, um, New Brunswick. Then I'm coming to Harris, Michigan for two nights. I'll be giving live readings on October 6th and October 7th at the Island Showroom. Then I'm coming to Omaha, Nebraska. Then I'm coming to Kansas City, Missouri. I'm coming to uh, Laughlin, Nevada, to the Edgewater Casino Resort. I'm also coming to Santa Rosa, California. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm coming to Foxwoods Resort Casino in uh, Connecticut. And I'm also coming to the Hard Rock, Sacramento, and Wheatland, California as well. So to join me, just go to meetmattfraser.com meetmattfraser.com. The link is right here on your screen. If dead people can find me, so can you. But in the meantime, I want you all to have a safe and amazing Labor Day weekend. I hope that you all enjoy the long weekend. And what I want you to know is this, is that it's never too late to contact to your loved ones, speak to your loved ones, or to start to develop your own psychic ability. It's a phone line that you always have. You'll never lose it. And what I want you to know is that the same way that you're learning to tap in and connect with your loved ones, your loved ones are also learning how to connect with you. Oh, one other thing I wanted to let you guys know, which is so important. That is, I know that a lot of you guys had written to me and you're like, Matt, 
what are the chances that you can start doing online readings later on in the evening? Because I know that many of you had written to me and said to me, Matt, I really need you to start doing readings online or so your online readings later. I live on the West Coast. It's harder for me to get to an online reading or I'm in mountain time. And some of you are like, I have kids. There's no way I can make a seven o'clock online reading event. So what I want you guys to know is that starting in November, I hope you're excited about this. Leave it in the comments. Starting in November, the online readings that take place during the week will be at, um, excuse me, will be at eight o'clock PM. So I'm adding some online readings in November for eight o'clock PM for all of you who were, who are, who wrote to me and requested this, who wasn't able to go and to attend an online reading before. What I want you guys to know is that I'm adding some in November. They're going to start at eight o'clock PM for all of you who are working, have kids, and uh, had such a hard time. So, oh my God, I'm so happy you guys are excited about that. Izzy saying, thank you. I also see that S. Nelson is saying later would be better. Yes, uh, Dor uh, Doris is saying that is awesome. I am so freaking excited too. So for all of you guys who could never make it to an online reading, up on my website, there's some online reading dates in November as well. And they start at eight o'clock PM Eastern time. So that gives you enough time to go home, get the kids ready, Put your husband in bed. No, just kidding. Get yourself, get, get yourself in bed, right? Or sit at your, at your, listen, you wouldn't believe how many people do these online readings for bed. It's actually kind of funny. I've, we had people doing the online readings from the bed, the toilet, the kitchen, the, the kitchen couch with a glass of wine. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. Get yourself all comfortable and come and join us. Uh, that's happening in November. I love you guys. Trust in the signs. Um, and for the rest of you, I will see you at tomorrow night's, uh, excuse me, tomorrow afternoon's online group reading. I'm so excited. I had to go and get my beauty sleep. Talk to your loved ones in spirit because tomorrow I'll be doing live readings. And if you're attending, you're bringing them with you. So I can't wait to hear what they got to say. And for the rest of you, I hope to see you live in person on tour. I hope to see you at the psychic seance, or I hope to see you at the next online reading. I love you guys. Have a safe Labor Day weekend and trust 